Okay. I can't. Can I hear now? Talking? Oh, I'm not talking. <laughs> 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 Uh, oh boy i genuinely was like oh i oh, I cannot hear <laughs> felt like um why can't i hear a thing like i was in an explosion and like i'm like <laughs> what's wrong with my was it like <laughs> yeah like it's ringing and i'm not doing well oh boy welcome to slop city everybody we're back here live at the Randall Cash Money Cash Studio here live in St. Louis, Missouri. <sighs> it's Mardi Gras today. It is? Uh-huh. Bunch of hack-ass bitches going out, puking in the streets. Pissing, showing titties for no show- reason. I had I some old guy at the bar the other day was like, you know, I just don't see as many boobs anymore. Is that Donald? Gras. No. <laughs> Someone else that sounds just like Donald. No, another elderly man. <laughs> just don't. You're like, yeah, that's the way it's supposed to be because you're a creepy old man. They all sound the same. Is that called a waterbed drink? It's, <laughs> it's called Waterloo. 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 And I've got my gum on top of it. Today's show is sponsored by Waterdew. Waterdew. Waterloo. Waterloo. Legendary lo- taste. Yeah. I love that the top says legendary taste. Also sponsored by Benner Black Tea from Aldi. Get it in unsweetened or sweetened. Oh, that's today. from Aldi? Mm hmm. I didn't know they had those there. Real bad. It is bad. But I'm used to it now. Well, I mean, uh, the company name, Benner. <laughs> you got I- your Clancy's, you got your Benner, you got your Nature's Nectar. Yep. Some classic Aldi brand. You got your never any. You've got your uh, <laughs> you've got your elevation protein bars. <laughs> I like those. I do the Atkins style ones that are like only two grams of net <laughs> carbs. Bennett. And the Clancy. How do you feel about the Clancy's chips at Aldi? I love the Clancy's chips. I wouldn't go for like a, a fake Dorito, but I can eat the cheddar and sour cream and the sour cream and chives or whatever this does not have legendary taste (laughs) my waterloo it's a it's a Lacroix, but it's like they're trying to be like we're better than Lacroix. there's Mm. more flavor and it's like ah cool you let the strawberry sit in the water a little longer before you took it out and ripped my heart out where does one get a waterloo i got it at walmart huh i was there buying my nicotine mints Randy is on the Aldi website just checking stuff out right now. Just checking out. Clancy's, even their logo, it genuinely just looks sad. It <laughs> looks like a guy was like, listen, I'm a really good graphic designer and lied about all of their credits. And they're like, yeah, I went to RISD and uh, I'm just a really, really good graphic designer. And he uses the same font. I don't know what font that is, but. They ask him, they're like, hey, man, could you make a Clancy's? So the brand name uh, for this is going to be Clancy's. This one is Nature's Nectar. This one is. Neck what? Nectar. Nectar. Whatever. (laughs) Fuck you. Welcome to Nature's Nectar. Uh, Hello. Welcome to Nature's Nectar. I will be your uh, host. And today we will see one lion. (laughs) Fucking kill another lion so quick, your eyes won't believe it. <laughs> My name is Svetlana, and this is Nature's Nectar. <laughs> nectar. Nectar. How do you say it, Jim? <laughs> it's Nectar, Svetlana. Nature's Nectar. <laughs> nectar. Okay, what is Nectar? Like nectar. Nect- nectar. 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 No, 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 no. Nectar sounds like bad white person name. <laughs> Excuse me, Jim Nectar. <laughs> what is that? Nectar. It's got an A in it. If it had O in it, then I would pronounce <laughs> Nectar. Look, uh, Svetlana, I don't think you being a foreigner are in any, any position to tell an American <laughs> that how we pronounce our words here in America. I have one question and one question only for you. Who is current speaker of the house? Uh, Go fuck yourself. That would be... Uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Sounds like you just mix up two names together. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Listen, you're 
don't come in here and try your communist stuff on me, your KGB mind powers on you, me. You want to see communists? You want to see communists? No. Okay. We, we don't even want socialism. Guess what? You're wrong. I don't know how to tell you, but you're wrong. You say, you dummies, you guys are so dumb in this American country. You think, oh my God, Bernie Sanders is communist. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. You have not seen communists. I grew up in Soviet Russia, okay? Guess what I did? Wait in line for bread. You think this stinky American country is going to let people wait in line for bread? Fuck. We are, we are frankly too lazy for that. Uh, no. To be honest. I go to Walmart and people wait minutes in line to check out with bread and people erupt. Okay. <laughs> so how the fuck are any of you going to be able, you can't handle the heat. You couldn't handle communism if you wanted to. Okay. Listen. So I just want you to be clear. Bernie 2020. Nature's nectar. Listen. Did I say it right? Said Lana. With no disrespect, but I don't think you're the voice of a Clancy's chip. I'm sorry. What? Maybe we could put you on one of the wines or one of the breads. I already used my Clancy's publishing advance to buy a, a home. What am I going to tell the bank? Huh? You want to call the bank and tell them, hey, guess what? Clancy's just dropped you as face of Clancy's. You've Do bought you want to be the one? For $100? <laughs> I bought the, <laughs> what kind of home did you buy? I bought the I bought a nice uh, uh, crib in uh, <laughs> rural r- 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 rural in the country. Wow. Okay, I- I'm sorry. I just I can't imagine any American wanting to eat a Clancy's cheddar cheddar and sour cream chip when they hear a voice that sounds like a communist ruler. I'm sorry. Okay, I will be filing complaint with Better <laughs> Business Bureau. I will get on Twitter and get all of my followers to destroy your company. So um, have a good day. Nature's nectar. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How's everybody doing? That tonight? was a little bit of improv for you. Just a little bit of improv. Ever heard of it? Oh, improv. Sounds like whose line is it anyway? Is that when they play a short game and then they fill in the line? No, sometimes improv can be long form. The best way I would describe it to somebody that doesn't know fucking shit about improv (laughs) is kind of like a play on stage. And you get to see characters come in and out, in and out, in and out. And everybody's witty and funny, and there's a nice, hopefully, theme or thesis throughout the whole thing. Show can go on for 30 minutes to an hour. I I think the theme of that one was that um, stay away from Clancy's chips. Yeah, I know and some communism. of you at home right now are like, no, 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 it's communism. <laughs> that was the message. Nope. Stay just away from name, Clancy's chips. Just name one country that's socialism has done good for <clears throat> Denmark. <clears throat> okay, Sweden. just name two countries <clears throat> that socialism has done good for them. <clears throat> the Netherlands. <laughs> okay, uh, so you're telling me that I have to go to work and pay for other people to go to the doctor? Yes, and what's going to happen, sir, it's very, very simple. Your taxes will be raised, but at the end of the year... The money that you save on your premium Mm -hmm. payment each Mm -hmm. month, which is how Mm -hmm. much is your premium each month, sir? It's about $350. $350. Well, one thing I will tell you is I am not a mathematician, but let me just add that up. I just don't want to mess it up. $350 a month times 12 is $4,200. You will be taxed extra throughout the year. I would say maybe, you you know, $2,000. You still come out. $2,000 $2,000 on top because you don't have to pay your fucking premium. Mm. Does that make sense, sir? And then guess what? You can go into any doctor. And I don't know exactly what it's going to look like because we've never seen it in this country. But I would uh, implore you to call your friends in Canada and see what's up. Okay. So you're telling me that people that were born poor into poverty have the human right to go into a doctor and get health care when they're sick? Sir, um, how many cars have you had repossessed? That's besides the point. <laughs> That's between me and God. 
<laughs> That's between me and the repo man, Rico. He can fuck him. <laughs> but every time, every time one of my cars get repoed, you know what I do? I pull myself up by my bootstraps and get me another car. Sir, if I'm not mistaken, it looks like one of your bootstraps is ripped. That's because I pull them up a lot. <laughs> Unlike all y'all socialists who want everything for free. Well, I just want to say that I am technically a uh, democratic socialist, and uh, I pull up my pants a lot, and sometimes I get a little hole in the back of my jeans because I'm always pulling them up because mm-hmm. I don't want to wear a belt. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I don't want to be restricted mm-hmm. by having to pay mm-hmm. a very large premium every month. Boom! Full circle. Uh, Guys, that was improv, okay? I'm not done yet, (laughs) ma'am. And they're going to take our guns. Uh, Nobody's taking your guns, Dave. Not one per. Nobody's taking your guns. Maybe a bump stock, okay? But we don't need that. They're go- I seen Bernie Sanders. I seen him out on the streets going to each home. He's got a little duffel bag and he's saying, give me your gun. And then we have to surrender <laughs> our gun into Bernie Sanders duffel bag. I'm going to be honest. I bet the only thing Bernie Sanders was knocking on doors, holding open a little duffel bag was his grassroots found uh, campaign donations. OK, because if you know Bernie Sanders, that motherfucker doesn't ask like a cool ass number like I need one hundred dollars today. <laughs> He asks for, I need $9.27 today. It's very <laughs> odd numbers. He'll take spare change. So I would assume what's going into that devil bag is just any spare change that people <laughs> He well, literally funny. on his website, it's like, make a donation today. $9, $27, $13. Like, it's all the weirdest fucking numbers. I love it. I got a Bernie thing today. Did I text you the picture of my parents at the Bernie thing? No. Oh, my God. They're knocking on doors uh, for, by the way, this is uh, in no way, shape, or form an endorsement of any kind of candidate on this podcast, the Slop City Podcast. We believe in a free, fair, and just election system, and we just want everybody to do whatever they feel is right. Oh, and look uh, at the burn man. I know. Oh, it is a weird number. Isn't it? $2.70, 27 I mean, this one's, it's like w- when you go to his email, there's always these weird, weird numbers. <laughs> What a guy. Hold on. I'm trying to find this. Oh, there it is. <coughs> Excuse us for the delay. We were just having a few technical difficulties, everybody. Check out that picture. And while you do that, I'm going to talk about <clears throat> some of my dates that I have coming up. Because I'm going out on the town, y'all. Okay, while Libby was looking at my pictures, um, that's a great picture. Where do your what are the dates that you're working aren't they on cute? here? Uh, what do I have? I've got uh, March twenty seventh and twenty eighth. I think it is. I will be in Raleigh, North Carolina, at Goodnight's Comedy Club. Yeah, do they have a condo? Um, no, I'm going to be staying. No, they do not. I'm going to be staying with. Um, a friend out there. I'm going to be opening up for Jeremy Essig. Oh, that's going to be March 28th through 29th. Um, let's see. Next weekend here in St. Louis, I will be performing at Top Golf. Did you know that they do comedy? I did. I will be doing comedy there. So we'll I've see how that goes. I've heard those are good shows. Um, I have heard nothing, which could either mean they're very good or very bad. So we'll see. Bobby the Bone Man did them. Bobby the Bone Man Jaycox. So Bobcat's coming to Helium? He's coming to the Helium in Raleigh, the oh, Good Nights. Fuck. Good Nights Comedy Club in Raleigh. Raleigh Durham. Not sure what that means. But yeah, um 228 through 229. I'll be at Top Golf in Chesterfield, Missouri. March 12th through March 14th, I will be at Helium, St. Louis, opening up for Beth Stelling. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And then March 21st. Libby and I are going to be on a show at the Improv Shop in St. Louis, Missouri. So if you are living La Vida Loca here in St. Louis, come out to the show because that'll be a good one. And then I'll be in Raleigh, Raleigh, March 28th through March 29th. So come out. Opening up up for uh, uh, Jeremy Essig out there. So that'll be a good old time. So just... Used to do a podcast with Jeremy Essig. Oh, fuck me. The shows are March 27th and 28th. I have 28th and 29th on my dates. 
Okay, I would like to <clears throat> retract everything that I just said. <laughs> On uh, March 27th and 28th, I will be at Raleigh Goodnights. I fucked up the dates. Life's good. Booyah, Kasha. Um, how are you getting to Raleigh? Are you flying? Uh, I have a uh, really nice motorized scooter that I <laughs> plan on riding cross country. So wow. It is. No, I'm flying. I got, I, I bought my uh, ticket with Southwest Point. So how, um, the tickets were so cheap. How official do you feel flying to a gig? Pretty official, uh, except I paid for it. <laughs> But still, but you yes. have to fly somewhere. I've said this before, and I will say it again. I feel so important when I am walking through an airport. I'm going to visit my parents in D.C., and just getting to say that out loud, getting to say, you know what, I actually can't do that. I'm going to be in D.C. That makes me feel so good. I'm going to wake up that day. I'm going to have some breakfast. I'm going to be, like, on the phone making deals, you know. Excuse me, can't chat. I'm important. What, getting what? on a flight. What's your go-to airport outfit? Um, my go-to airport outfit is generally I'm I'm comfy. I like to roll comfy. Mm-hmm. Rafe will wear a full normal getup. <laughs> like I, it's almost like if I was to be like, hey, you want to wear like uh, leggings or sweatpants to the airport? He would be like, oh no, we have to break up. <laughs> Like, if I only pack that outfit for him, he wears his gray jeans, his black V-neck, and boots. I'm more I'm more comfy than that. I well, might wear jeans, but I don't know. I You got to bend in weird ways when you're in the airport to, like, or when you're, you know, like, on the plane taking a nap, you know? What you, if I have an extra seat and I want to put my legs up there? And you got to take your shoes off so that, you know, you got all kind of movement in the airport. Yeah. I mean, I will, I'll definitely be wearing like leggings and a sweater or something of that sort. Should get you a leopard print coat. I have a leopard print kimono. Does that count? It wouldn't be warm enough. I like to have a a heavy blanket type garment. That's another thing. I do not fuck with being, I'm cold all of the time. I'm not getting on a fucking airplane wearing it. Even if it's 95 degrees outside and I'm getting on an airplane, I'm bringing a coat. Yes. Because it's if, cold on there. Yes. It's fake air. It's like, it's it's recycled, cold, weird air. And it goes. I turn that fan off the second I get in the airplane. The little thing the up little top. The little butthole fan. I don't like that. I you don't, don't like, like it at all. You don't like people's fart air coming on you and coronavirus? It's honestly not even that. <laughs> 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 Whose part was that? Hi. Was that the one from the couch? A new one? Yeah. Wow. That's a hearty one. Oh God, that's <laughs> that's a really good one. I don't know why I'm not recording any of my farts because some they've been off the chain lately because I've been eating those elevation bars from Aldi. <laughs> <laughs> they've they've really elevated my fart game. Those make my bo- my boss gassy too. Yeah, she's like, I have a bar for lunch. I'm gonna be gassy. You can only eat one. <laughs> she eats two. I ate two yesterday. <laughs> she eats two, and then there's been days up. I eat four. What's in it that makes you toot? Um, there's a lot of fiber and there's sugar alcohols. Oh, and a lot of people are very sensitive to those. So yeah, you're fucking farting up a storm. Make sure to bring two elevation bars on my flight next week and. <laughs> Farted up. I d- I fart on planes and I have no problem with it because I know other people are farting on planes too. For sure, I was behind the bar yesterday and farted, but it was so loud in there. But it was one of those farts that I felt ripple in my pants. So I was like, "Man, this person behind me totally heard me." But I just acted cool as a cucumber. <laughs> Because there's so many elderly people that I was like, this guy's not going to know what hit him. Right. Looking around like, who farted? Was it me? You know, me? and if you're saying who farted at a bar, like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> who farted? Shut the fuck up, man. How about that? Why don't you eat your fucking mixed nuts and popcorn and shut the fuck up? Man, love that. Love that popcorn. 
That, love that popcorn and fries. Love that happy hour popcorn. Love that Donald with popcorn. Was the popcorn on time yesterday? Yeah, but I didn't bring it out. <laughs> I am sick and tired of these false advertisements saying popcorn. And there's no popcorn. Great popcorn. <laughs> what the fuck, man? It's the greatest popcorn in the country. That was a serious belch. <laughs> Eczema therapy. Yeah, Donald came in yesterday. I haven't seen him in a while because he hasn't been driving. So people have been driving him around. Oh, no. I don't care. I, he said so many things yesterday that I was just like, I got so enraged and annoyed and everybody at the bar was annoyed. And I mean, I literally at one time go, oh, my God, I hear somebody calling my name. And I ran <laughs> out. Nobody called my name. And I ran out from behind the bar because I could not listen to him one more time. And Donald goes, nobody called her name. You know, I buy drinks for everybody. And he's been bragging lately about giving $20 bill. He pulled out a wad of maybe $2,000 in hundreds yesterday. And then he says, Tina, you know, I do this all the time for you. Okay, so let me just get you your tip now. And he's pulling out $100 bills. And part of me was like, damn, is he about to give me $100? And then he goes, um, could you break this? <laughs> <laughs> After going through trying to find a 20. And I was just like, yeah, man, I can. I broke it. And then he goes, you know, I do this a lot for you. I do this for all the girls. I, you know, I, I, I give a lot of money. And I'm like, dude, stop, Brett. No one cares. He's feeling down. He wants to I don't feel care. Better. I couldn't handle him yesterday. Oh, Tina, isn't she pretty? Oh, <laughs> she's so pretty. Look at her. Look at Tina. You know, I would just, I'm like, stop. <laughs> you would not do anything, Donald. Oh, God. And then he, like, looks over at, uh, the manager, Andrew, and he's like, you know, I could buy you a drink, but I don't want to see your dick or anything <laughs> in front of the whole fucking bar. And everyone's like, what are you talking about, man? Did Andrew start laughing? Yes, but it was also like, he was just on one yesterday. He's all fired up, been in the house a lot. Oh, God. You can tell he's just, just fired up. He needs me. It's more apparent now than ever oh, God. that he needs a live-in companion. Listen, I am trying to save you. <laughs> you keep telling me, oh, Tino, Tino, why didn't you tell me that Donald <laughs> was at the bar? Why didn't you tell me that Donald came into the restaurant? Because I'm trying to save you <laughs> from a life of slavery. I'm trying to save you from a life of being run around by this motherfucker. <laughs> because it, once you get in, he's going to be tossing you 20s. Yeah, $20 bills. 20s left and right. You're not going to be able to get out. You're going to be stuck in your life. You're going to quit. You're going to quit stand-up comedy. You're going to quit everything because he's going to become your life. I'm trying to save you. Well. Maybe that's the plan God has for me. Oh, no. <laughs> no. No. I just need God to send me a sign. Send me an angel. No, and Donald just flies down. <laughs> With his barely working legs, nodding off as they're bringing him down from the sky. <laughs> He's like... <laughs> <laughs> a bird flies right into him. <laughs> Donald's like the birds that fly straight into the window. You oh, know, like golly. he'd be like, <laughs> "Send me an angel, <laughs> send me an angel right now." And Donald's just. <laughs> <laughs> You know the way Mr. Bean, there's the beam of light that shoots down, and then Mr. Bean shoots down from the heavens? No. Apparently. Really? Have you never watched an episode of Mr. Bean? I've, maybe. In the intro, 
there's like a hallelujah type thing. It's like, no, 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 no. And it's like, you know, just a dark street in the UK, I would assume, is mm-hmm. where a dark street. And then all of a sudden a beam of light shoots down and you're like, whoa, what's happening? And Mr. Bean flies whoa. from the beam of light and he's on the ground like, and he gets up and kind of brushes himself off. I think Donald would shoot down and <laughs> lay down and never get up. <laughs> oh, my God. You'd have to revive him. And I, there's only one way to revive Donald. Via his peener? Uh-huh. Well, I don't know about all that. Well, you don't. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to save you from a life of heartache. Maybe we could get a flashlight and then put it yeah. on there. Then oh, that, that way you God. don't actually have to touch if his If Donald tongue or... got a flashlight, <laughs> he, he would love it. He would never, ever be able to stop. He, I, I mean, he'd bring it up to the bar and be like, boy, you guys should check this thing out. And, you know. It's called a flashlight. He's always giving stuff of his to other people, too. Like, if he eats, he's like, do, do you want a chicken strip? Do you, you know, always. Because he just wants. That's how he buys friends. He buys friends. By buying people drinks, bragging about buying people drinks and moving on and going, you know. Oh, that's how he said the dick thing to the manager. He was like, is it tacky if I buy him a drink? Is it? It's tacky? Well, I'd buy him a drink, but I don't want to see your dick. (laughs) It's like, yeah, boy. (laughs) But, I mean, if he got a flashlight, he'd be like, you want a (laughs) Duncan? To everybody, everybody at the bar. Do you, you could dunk in it. You're looking good today. <laughs> he probably would never clean it out either. Oh, Jesus Christ. No fucking way. <laughs> oh, Donald. Oh, Donald. My uh, cousin turned 30 this week. She lives in St. Petersburg, Russia. And her best friend messaged me earlier this week to commission me, <clears throat> excuse me, to send a video because it was a surprise party they were throwing for her. Mm-hmm. And it was like a bunch of memories from friends and all this stuff. And uh, here's, do you want to hear the video that I sent her? Yes. Is it in Russian? No, of course not. Yeah. It's, um, uh, I, I sent her this video and uh, it was like, you know, have a memory or whatever. She's like, she'll be totally surprised to see you in this party, in the video or whatever. So her friend just now texted me and goes, oh, my God, she is absolutely happy. Thank you a lot. Because, like, you know, her English is – it's very good, very good. But She's like, absolutely happy. Yeah, there's – uh, like, uh, the video that I sent her the other day, she goes, it's so nice, but the quality of picture is rather low. Maybe try you, – you try in Telegram. <laughs> and Telegram. I was just, yeah, it's like some app where you can chat through it. It's like uh, supposed to be like quick, direct. Uh, it's mostly for people that are like overseas and trying to communicate. But I just told her, I was like, I can't figure this out. I'm sure it's shitty quality because I use selfie mode on iPhone. What an idiot. Just play that one and make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's the video that I, uh, what I made her. Surprise! Happy birthday! Hi, Lena. It's me, your cousin Tina from America. I love you so much. And uh, your friend Susha, I think that's how you pronounce her name. I hope it is. She commissioned me to make this video for you and tell you that I love you very much. And uh, happy Dirty 30. It's your 30th birthday. Oh, you're a grown woman. I'm so proud of you. You're such a grown woman. You have a husband. His name is Anton. Oh, you're doing great. And you have baby Dima. You're growing into such a young, wonderful influencer on Instagram. I think all of us are kind of like becoming famous. Like my brother Anton is doing YouTube videos. I do stand-up comedy. You're a very hot and sexy and wonderful Instagram influencer. This is a big deal, okay? It seems to be a D-ball thing that we're just all very <laughs> famous and beautiful. Um, I love you so much. I just want to say happy Dirty 30, and um, I want to tell a fun story about you, something that I think sums up who you are in one. Uh, when I visited St. Petersburg a few years ago, Liana and I were outside of, like, a bar restaurant, 
and we're talking about like our families and our parents and sharing stories about our lives that we didn't get to experience at the same time because we live so far away. And I kind of like started crying. Liana started crying. And then we go inside and I went to the bathroom to kind of freshen up because I'm crying. And I come back out and Rafe's like, where's Tina? And Liana says, oh, she's crying. She's so emotional. <laughs> um, and you called me out in front of all of my American friends. So that's very embarrassing. <laughs> but the next thing I want to say is that Liana has told me that Americans think farts are too funny. And my friends and I that visited Russia were speaking about this the other day. Where they're like, what do you mean we think farts are too funny? We're like, Lena, if you're sitting next to somebody on the subway and they just start farting and they're farting like this, like... <laughs> You wouldn't laugh at all? You wouldn't think this is funny? And she says, no, we wouldn't say a word. Well, guess what? Farts are big in America, and I hope they become big in Russia again. Um, <laughs> I love you, Lena. I hope that, um, you know, we, we live so many miles away, but have so many similarities. And the one thing that I will say is your father loves safari. My father loves safaris. And I hope that one day we get to go on a big safari together. I love you so much. Happy 30th birthday. Mwah! I hope you're surprised. You're the best. You deserve everything that you have gotten. So I hope you have fun tonight and get to party hard. I love you. Bye. <laughs> you should have farted one last time. I know. Why didn't I? <laughs> Can you just Photoshop that in there? What an embarrassing fucking. I should have gone out with a big fart bang. <laughs> <laughs> we have this like running joke about we found out when I visited Russia. She's like, oh, God, my dad is obsessed with safaris. He wants to go so bad. And like, I'm like, my dad's obsessed with safaris. And we were crying, laughing, making fun of our dads, roasting. Are they brothers? Them. They're brothers. Oh, my God. And they're not close. What's but his name? Sergey. <laughs> and uh, I was looking on Groupon one night and it was like. Big cat blanket. You know, it was like one of those big blankets that has like a huge tiger on it. And I was like, hey, buying this for your dad and sending it to him. And it was like <laughs> a matching comforter set of like all tigers or oh whatever. Oh, my God. It's so ridiculous. They love it. They're obsessed with it. Like oh. she said, her dad just sits and watches videos. I'm like, that's literally what my dad does I every day. I why. I don't know. I don't know. Something else I wanted to ask about. Ugh. Fuck. God damn it. I can't believe oh. I didn't. I missed the opportunity to fart at the end of the video. Her husband's name is what? Anton. And then her baby's name is? Dima. Those are the two names that are in the in the Russian app. They're very common names. Oh, so it's like Mike. And My brother's name is Anton. Is that like Tony? And then my godfather's son's name is Anton. <laughs> and what's the, the second one? Um, Dima. Dima. wonder what that's like a derivative of. like Dimitri. That's the full name. Yeah. And my, my cousin, Lena's brother, is named Dima. So she named her baby after her brother, Dima. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. And then... Yeah, it's a uh, pretty pretty Mike and Steve kind of. I think Dima is the like equivalent to Steve, and Anton is like you know, I don't know, maybe Mike, Alexander, Chris. yeah. And then the women's names are like Christina, Svetlana, um, what else? I mean, there's there's a ton. Ivanka, that's a thing. I knew a couple Russian gals in high school. I'm trying to think what their names were. Oh, my God. Knew a fellow named Dimitri in high school. Mm. I just texted uh, my cousin's friend and said, tell her I'm sorry I didn't fart at the end of the video. Missed opportunity. <laughs> They're probably getting so drunk right now. So it is today, tonight, right yeah. now? They're nine hours ahead of us. Oh, man. They're partying it up. 
they get fucking wrecked. <laughs> I mean, they get fucked up. I know my cousin sneaks smoking cigarettes and stuff. She's living it up. <clears throat> Sneaks it like a real at her own party. She has to sneak a cigarette Mm -hmm. because her mom will get mad, even though her dad smokes. Smoking's cool. What can I say? I mean, it's we all love it here in this room. What about you, Kitty? Do you like smoking? He actually looks like he's deceased, so that's disturbing. Uh, We looked over, and uh, Kitty is deceased, (laughs) so we will be. Kitty! He is just not looking up. He's not alive anymore. He doesn't give a fuck about us. I spooked him earlier. I walked in, stomping around. Spooked him hard. I, um... I did a set last night at a place called Pop's Blue Room. Oh, I've never- heard of this. Well, I didn't. And when they told me, yeah, we're doing a show at Pops at 7.30, I was like, wait, what? The one on the east side? Yeah. Pops is, <laughs> he does look deceased. Um, Pops is like this fucking, there's a lot of cocaine there. It's open, I believe, 24 hours. 23. 23? They close down one hour to clean. At oh, like do they really? six in the morning. Yeah, yeah right. They're not cleaning. <laughs> Everyone there gets fucking wrecked, man. What are they doing for the hour then? That's I think they're they getting said. I think they're getting drunk. They get drunk the other twenty three. I I mean I don't know. Maybe they have one person come in for a shift that's sober, and they're <laughs> like this guy cleans everything. This guy goes in and cleans the shitters, and that's it. Open back for business. Oh boy, I've had a lot of bad times at that place. Oh, me too. Oy. A lot of, lot of crazy, crazy coked out times. Playing pool, drinking. I mean, I think smoking inside. I don't remember. Having the time of your life, I'm sure. Ugh. You know that feeling when you're, it's like, like you're talking about when you don't take your antidepressants and you start to feel kind of like feverish and shitty or like right when you get sick, when you're kind of like ugh, cold. Like That's how I felt night. at Pops all of the time. But I don't think I had a fever. I just felt a little cold. <laughs> it was so dark in there and big and vast. Ugh, scary. I once took a limo there. I'm sorry, what? I When I worked at the Marriott, I was a good good 20-year-old person. Mm-hmm. And it, we, I had these older employees who were in there, like 25, 26 and they wanted to go there. And this is, I started smoking because of them and drinking coffee. Oh, but they're God. like, we're going to go to Pops. You want to go? I'm like, I'm not even 21 yet. And they're like, we'll get you in. And somehow we took a limo. I don't know how. We'll get you in. And they pull your shirt down <laughs> and take your tits and tape them together. Like they do like a quick makeover to make you look older. You're like, what are you doing? And then that's not they draw, make me look older. They draw eyebrows on you. <laughs> I think one of the employees had a limo. That's how we. And then we just got dropped off at the fucking Pops. You know, I oh, think, what a mess. I think one, if I have the money someday, I might have a limo just to do a bunch of really dumb shit in. Like an old timey limo? Yes. They don't really use those anymore. No. I saw a limo the other day. It was like, it was driving very quickly. I was like. <laughs> I hope there is not people in there. This limo took a turn so quick. I was like, whoa. I almost expected it to bend with it because it was turning that quickly. Like, you know, a semi is like broken in the middle and you take a nice solid right turn and it kind of breaks it up evenly. This limo, it was one of those Escalade ones and it had the dope ass lights on the bottom to let you know like they're there to party. They probably smoke and fuck too in there. Oh, yeah. They're fucking and smoking for sure. It was, it turned so quick that I was like, whoa, there's no fucking way that I could drive one of those. I mean, I see semis on the street and I'm like, no, they're uh, number one. I couldn't drive it skill wise. Number two, I could not drive that long. I would be miserable. It's awful. There's sure. not enough podcasts in the world or music. I'm anxious when I, I just had to get new insurance because my insurance is like 350 a month because of my DUI. 
and I'm getting new insurance. It's going to be two seventy a month, Ooh. which is good. I mean, that's right. eighty bucks or whatever I'm going to save. So I'm doing that, and they were like, "Awesome! Do you want to do the uh, <clears throat> the safe driving monitor? So it's an app, and you know, it monitors your driving, and your insurance rates will go down." That's and I'm creepy. like. I know myself and how I drive. I speed. I'm going, I'm speeding all the time to begin with. I can get to Kansas City in one hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I will not be taking the option. That's I mean, creepy. They I, do that? Yeah, there's a ton of these insurance companies now do it. And they monitor. My mom did it. And my mom, I took her car one time while she had this thing on. Oh, God. Uh huh. And she was, they had like a big alert being like, hey, really fast stops, sudden turns. And <laughs> she was smoking inside. <laughs> <laughs> she was also drunk. We have a breathalyzer. She's my drunk. Mom, hey, she, your car is impounded. What's going on? Yeah. There's a guy in the car. <laughs> She's sucking him off. My mom, like, sees a live stream. What the fuck? <laughs> I had to tell them no on this thing because I'm like, I can't. I know how I drive. It's bad. I just, I would not like the invasion of privacy. I don't it give a fuck. me out. If I, if I drove properly and it would actually save me money, I would do it in a heartbeat. <laughs> Mine would be. Mine would be like, this is not a safe driver. Clearly, she's elderly. She's going too slow. Yeah. She's stopping too long. They would be like, oh, my God, she baked cookies and is holding up a stoplight, giving <laughs> cookies to homeless people. Like, it, she's just a really bad risk. I'm the extreme. I'm like, I drive too fast and do two sudden, like, stops. And I'm on my phone the entire time I drive. And they're like, she did. She made a feature-length film on the way to Kansas City. And this gal, Just we tried one, to call her and she, we kept getting a message that said, not safe time to talk right yeah, now. Yeah, it was an automatic message from your cell phone being like, sorry, I'm driving. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm in a meeting. <laughs> They're like, she's not in a meeting, she's driving. <laughs> I would, you know, the movie, the movie uh, 1917, it was like, came out this last year. It's like a war film and it was shot in one continuous shot. They would be like, what? Yeah, it's fucking crazy. But if I did this safe code driving thing or whatever where they monitor my shit, they'd be like, dude, she did a one movie in one shot on her phone while she's driving. She never looked at the road. Not once. Uh, this is a popcorn corner that I can get into. One continuous shot for a feature length film? Yes. There were there's no bloopers? One, okay, there's one part. I haven't seen the movie. <laughs> But Rafe told me about it. And um, I gotta see this. Yeah. We should Google that for sure. Or at least we should watch the trailer. Let's watch the trailer right now. That's real popcorn corner shit. 1917 trailer. We're gonna watch it. Can we play the sound on here? We're not sure. Absolutely uh, not, not, Randy says. It's not on currently. I can't. The sound. Well, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I would say probably not. Let's not do it. But we are going to tell you guys everything that we see. 1917 trailer. Here we go. Benedict Cumberbatch. Okay. Whoa, it's a bunch of guys in a trench. That guy's got nice eyes. So this is a uh, World War II film, I believe. No, it's not. World War II was in in the 30s. So it's (laughs) definitely not World War II. Uh, They're sitting around. Sitting around, campfire, listening to somebody do a speech. Uh Uh-oh. They got bayonets. He said iceberg straight ahead. It's iceberg, iceberg. They're in the trenches. Uh-oh, lots of guns, lots of sandbags everywhere. They're walking inside of the trenches. Man, can you imagine what it would be like to make these, like, trenches? This is fu- It's fucking crazy. Reminds me of the time when uh, the Army recruiter, I asked him why they couldn't have uh, gay people couldn't be in the Army at the time. And he said, if you're in a foxhole and you're getting ready to die, would you want somebody trying to have sex with you? No! (laughs) Actual quote. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, when I'm in a foxhole and about to die, fucking somebody is not what I'm thinking about. 1917 is a staggering piece of filmmaking. 
There's Benedict Cumberbunkle. Oh, yeah. A pure adrenaline hit of a movie. Yeah, so allegedly this just follows him all through one one shot. Like, it's like kind of he's like supposed to deliver something to somebody. And then the movie, it literally there's one part where it blacks out, I guess, when he gets knocked out. But it's just following him as he's making the journey to, like, deliver this thing to the other but army. But it's filmed in one take? I mean, probably. I, I don't know. There's no way. There can't. I mean, there's different. I just. <coughs> that would mean that there would be no bloopers. It's 1917. <laughs> they can't fuck up. Shot in one take. Okay. It was not actually shot in one take, but rather a series of continuous uncut shots that were then cleverly connected to give the feeling of one long take. Oh. But still, pretty uh, pretty wild. Popcorn Carner. Popcorn I heard it was Carner. very good. You know what? I've heard the argument of people being like, well, 1917 should have won Best Picture. It was such an amazing thing. And I totally believe that. Like, I I bet it is an amazing movie, and I would like to see it. Haven't seen it yet. But it uh, lost to Parasite, which is a South Korean film. And it was one of the most original movies I've ever fucking seen. Parasite was. So I think the reason that 1917, the epic war film, did not win against Parasite is because we've seen war films before. Even though it was, like, beautiful and, like, an edgy kind of thing, it's like, oh, it's one take, it's really emotional. And, like, war movies can be very emotional because you get to look at, like, the people on the ground that are, like, part of the war because it's, like, a lot of the, you know, it's, I get it. I get why war films are very appealing because it's like, oh, shit, dude, this is, like, a regular fucking Joe who's, like, in the trenches, literally in the trenches in nineteen Literally. But Parasite won because it was, no one's ever seen anything like it before. It was wild. Do you think they're going to show it in the in the theaters again? Parasite? Yeah. I think it's still in theaters. Uh, I can't see it anywhere. It's still out. I went and saw it last week. You did? What'd yeah. you think? Eh, it was all right. Really? Yeah, it was a good movie. I right. loved it. I thought it was I, I like fucking Joker better. insane. You like Joker better than Parasite? Yeah, a lot better. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, I is. thought Joker was good, but I didn't yeah. think it was like... I don't know. I just, it it was good. And Joaquin Phoenix is a fucking savage. Like, he killed it in that movie. But, um, I no, might go I thought. see it today. I thought you should go see it. Thanks, It was Randy. good. I liked it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I liked it. I just never seen anything like it. it now, um, am I going to, is my OCD going to be tipped off and be disturbed? Mm. I, I don't think so. Is there a lot of is there any like weird killings or Yes. Oh fuck. Very good though. You should watch it. Look at it from like an artist's perspective. That's what you need to do. It's really interesting because it explores like the class systems in South Korea and like just in country it, it countries in general, you know, like in any kind of developed country. How there's like very rich people that have nothing to worry about. And then there's very poor people that are literally struggling to survive day to day. So it's it's really interesting. Well, that and should show them pulling themselves up by their bootstraps. Exactly. <laughs> no. By a lot of bootstraps. It's very, very heavy. It's uh it's interesting. It's funny. It's very dark. It's very it, there's a lot of parts that made me laugh. Like it's really interesting. Why, Highly recommend. Why do you think it's hard for white people to understand that not everyone is born with the same privileges? Not to get deep right before we stop, but I don't understand how they can't see that. <clears throat> what do you mean? Are you talking about like... I'm just saying like <clears throat> when people say pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Well, not everybody has the same bootstraps. White people are allotted... Uh, more when they're born, straps. more bootstraps just because they're white. As, and then uh, some people that maybe have been born into poverty don't have those same bootstraps to pull themselves up by. They don't have as many. <clears throat> I just, I can't understand. And, and I think it's because some white people don't want to see that. 
because they believe what they're doing is working hard and do it, get, getting by because they're working hard. Yeah. But really it's, they might be doing those things, but also they were born into a little different scenario. I, yeah. I mean, I think that there are some people who genuinely like just can't understand how deep poverty can destroy families and there are, I mean, because I've heard that from a lot of people. They're like, oh, yeah, well, you know, okay, well, they, they, I don't have a lot of privileges. Like, I've heard white people say this, people that I work with. Well, I don't have a lot of privileges, and I work hard for every single thing that I do. Like, why can't these people break the cycle or whatever? You know, whatever they're fucking talking about. And it's like, well, I mean, like, these are people who can't even begin to understand that, like, systematic racism is a real thing. That redlining is a real thing. I mean, there's a person I've worked with that has been like, well, what do you mean redlining? And, and like, they didn't even understand that that was a concept that happens, that people were literally like not able to move into certain areas and denied loans based on their race, gender, and, and so on. And so, they, you know, I think that there are some people who maybe are just kind of dumb. And I think people get locked up or like, they get really like caught up and stuck in their insular view of the world, whatever they have going on, you know, mm -hmm. and they get stuck and they can't get out of it. And I think that a lot of people are struggling. And I there are certain people that I think of that I've heard talk about stuff like this and they can't understand why somebody can't pull themselves up by the bootstraps or whatever their dumb fucking analogy is. And they, they're like, well, I'm fucking working hard, too. And I'm like, I'm sure you are, but you're not looking at a bigger picture. And things have been much easier for you because you're a white person. Right. You're, you're white. You're white. Okay. I don't know if you know this, but you're white. <laughs> <laughs> you're white. You get to say white. I don't know, ma'am. That's uh, that's a little deep for us to get into at the end here. It's but a little I just, too, a little too deep. It just it tr something you said about the class system and stuff really triggered me because I just yeah, I, I've been seeing a lot of that shit, especially on Facebook. People typing, you know, I just don't understand why people can't. I, I think it's wrapped in the stuff where people talking about Bernie and socialism. Sure, and then they say, you know, I work for everything I have. Yeah, that's fine and dandy. Um, but some people can't even start at that level because they're not, they don't have that privilege of like, I mean, just take my school, for example, that I work at. It's most of the families are low income. So we're already at a lower base than somebody at a, at a better school district just because we have, we don't always have all the materials that we need. We don't, the kids are fucking hungry. The kids are worried about when they go home, is somebody going to be there? Yeah. So I just, I don't know why I even start talking about this at the end. Well, I mean, no, I I thought of it. So um, <clears throat> Trump was talking about like the Parasite movie winning an award. And he was like, you know, uh, look at the Academy, you know, Parasite won best picture. <laughs> it's not even an English speaking film. You know, he's like talking mad shit on this movie winning an award. He's like, you know, South Korea, our trade with them. It's like, dude, shut the fuck up. What the? You don't know shit about movies. You don't know fucking shit. You don't know anything. We know you don't read. That's a fact. I guarantee it's hard for him to sit down and watch a movie. I bet a minute and he's like, oh, they spent too much money on this. It's like, you spent too much money, you piece of shit. How about that? Okay. I mean, and he was like, what did he say? He's like, you know, we need to bring back films like Gone with the Wind. It won an award. It won an Academy Award. What more do you want? It won Best Picture. It already did it. It's done. So what do you what do you want to remaster that movie and bring it back again? And also, that's a really fucked up movie. But it won Best Picture because it was highlighting a lot of the fucking problems that were going on at the time. It's just so fucking ridiculous. Uh, the trade deals with Saka. Why are you talking about trade deals right now? It's a move. It's art. <laughs> you don't look at a fucking thing that Michelangelo painted and be like, you know, the trade deals at the time were really bad. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. You look at it and you fucking appreciate it. Move on. Like he can't even ex uh, enjoy something else 
some art that wasn't created here. That's what it shows to me. You can appreciate Michelangelo, fucking, I mean, Galileo, not an artist, but look <laughs> through a telescope, okay? Um, I don't know. Who are famous? Picasso. None of these fucking people were American. Rembrandt. But I bet he's looking at their art like, I've got a Picasso in my room when I fuck other women than my wife. You know, <laughs> fuck you, man. Art doesn't have to be American for you to enjoy it. Okay? It just doesn't. It doesn't have to be made in the USA for people to fucking enjoy it. And guess what? Like, you can't bring back Gone with the Wind, buddy. <laughs> You just can't. It was tremendous. It was tremendous. Oh, what a great film. The Academy should have given that an award. <laughs> it's like, what, man? What are you talking about? <laughs> what do you want him to give that uh, every single year? Gone with the Wind is the winner. Yeah. <laughs> Forever. I would like to declare today Gone with the Wind Day. <laughs> we honor Gone with the Wind. I guarantee, look up how, let's look up how long Gone with the Wind is. You, I bet that movie's two and a half hours long. Oh, I bet it's longer least. than that. And it came out in what, like the 50s or something? Probably earlier than that. When did it come out? Fuck, 1939. Oh, Not three hours and 58 minutes. You're telling me that Donald Trump, whether you agree with his politics or not, it doesn't matter. This is not genuinely a political thing. Libby and I are campaigning for just basic human rights. Human rights. Human rights. That's all we want. All right. That's it. And I, you know what? I bet there's some Republicans that, that want basic human rights, okay? So we're not trying to make this a fucking political podcast. We're talking about Donald Trump as a hu- as a human. <laughs> You're telling me this motherfucker sat down and watched Gone with the Wind for three hours and 58 minutes and took notes on it and all of the really great social, you know, <laughs> messages in it and everything they talked about. And, oh, I really love this scene because it depicts... What it's like to be a rich person. Fuck you, man. He's probably watching it like, uh, she's hot. <laughs> Trump longs for Gone with the Wind because of Parasite Wind. Fuck, man. I could barely sit down and watch a four hour movie. The I only way Trump's watching Gone with the Wind is probably if somebody gave him a doobie before. <laughs> if doobie. he's fucking smoking and toking. Right before. And I bet even then he couldn't handle sitting for four hours and watching it. Guess what? I've never seen Gone with the Wind. I don't think I've seen it. And I'm a popcorn carner fanatic. (laughs) All right. (laughs) I'm going to watch Gone with the Wind this week just to prove a point. And I am going to take notes during it. (laughs) I'm going to take notes during it. And I'm going to try to come out with a thesis statement. And I don't really, I know there's like some, I mean, it's, uh, (laughs) the only thing I know is that I've heard people criticize it for being super racist, which can I be honest? I'm not surprised. It was made in 1939. (laughs) The Civil Rights Act was passed in what, 1965? Of course (laughs) it was racist. And of course Donald Trump is like, bring it back. (laughs) I want it back. Yeah, with, yeah, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna have a gun with the wind day, and it is gonna be really windy. But we're not gonna celebrate it in Chicago because I don't like that windy city because they don't like me. Yeah, we're gonna celebrate it in Kansas <laughs> yeah. on top of a hill. You fucking moron! <laughs> you uh-huh. fucking moron! You fucking moron! Cindy, you fucking moron! Cindy. Yeah. Yeah, Mom, yeah. Cindy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my brother, my twin brother died at birth on March 17th, 1938. Yeah. 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 All right, Cindy. Oh, Cindy. Now they will you open know, up all those bags of worms. Oh, boy. Well, it got it got deep for a second, and then we brought it back up. That's it. We're not a political podcast. We like fucking around. We just want to have a good time, and we just want everyone to be fucking happy. That's it. And that means everyone, even... Look, I know that doesn't... I don't want... No. No. 
we want most people that deserve it to be happy. Now. It's a human right. It's a human right, and every human deserves human rights. Even bad humans deserve human rights. I mean, I don't love them, but someone loves them. That's the what Lord. you got to remember. The Lord does. It, listen, it's between you and your repo man, all right? <laughs> That's what everything's between. Between oh, you and bear, your... Bear, bear. Bear, 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 bear. I mean... We just we just want everyone to be happy and we don't I don't want to infringe on anyone's shit. I don't want to fucking I don't want I just I just want everyone to be happy. I don't even necessarily want people to be happy. I just want people to have the same human human rights. I want it to be a level playing field for everybody. Yeah. Human. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, how are we going to get that? We're not. Because uh, we can't, we we just can't. Nope. So we got a lot of work to do. So we, meanwhile, listen, me and Tina will keep fucking sl- talking about sloppy pussies. We're gonna uh, keep plugging along, talking about pussies, our assholes, and whatever else we can think of. And in the meantime, if you want this message to be spread to everybody, <laughs> find it inside of your heart to tell everybody about <laughs> Slop City <laughs> Podcast and the good work we're doing here. Okay, especially. You, are you, you disappointed in your congressman? Awesome. Are you disappointed in your local mayor? Awesome. Well, why don't you hop on to Slop City's Patreon? (laughs) How I don't know how that'll help. It'll help us. It'll help us. And if you just keep spreading the good word, maybe we'll all be all right. All right. Or not. Or we'll all fucking die in a week. Yeah. We're. I mean, any of us could die at any moment, as my mother likes to say. Damn, Svetlana, you're hardcore. She's deep as fuck, dude. She's a savage motherfucker. Damn. Nah, today's episode was sponsored by Nature's Neck Tear. <laughs> thank you, Nature's, Nature's, Nature's Neck Na- Tear. Thank you, Nature's Nectar. Neck Hair, for all that you've done. For Nature's us today. Nectar. Nature's Neck Hair. Nectar. Get any Nature's Nectar brand items at Aldi. Or how do you say it? Nectar? Nectar. But Nectar. I'm, I'm a Southern girl, you know? Southern. I'm a Southern Belle, just like in Gone with the Wind. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait to watch it this week and report back. I might watch it tomorrow. Haven't decided yet. Wow. But I am going to watch you got it. it like that where you can just rent a three ninety nine movie and just fucking watch it without worrying about your bank account going down drastically? Yeah, I'm doing pretty well. My credit card bill is a little higher than I'd like to admit right now. But we're going to get it down. Hey, I tell you what. I bought a $798 recliner. <laughs> Did you really? Seconds later, refunded it. <laughs> Where did you buy the recliner? Um, in the store. Only. If you did it, you did no, it in did it store. Online. Oh, I thought you did it in store. You were like, okay, yep. Uh, just gonna put my card in, remove my card, the chip, everything was accepted. You know what? I actually can't do this. I need you. I'm really sorry. I know you just spent your time loading up the recliner into my car and everything, but I really just need to return it because this is really embarrassing. And you guys have way too nice of a bathroom. I would only like to buy my furniture from places that have actual shit on top of shit inside of their toilets. So I I am really sorry. I went in the store and tested them out first, took a picture of the one I liked, went online and bought it. And then I was like, I can't. It's too much money. Too much. And I'll just stick with only having a bed as furniture. (laughs) Dude, it's fucking... (laughs) The way that your house is set up is like dope houses that I was in when I was doing drugs. It's worse than a dope house. It's like... It's like... It's like somebody found a vacant house and just moved a bed in there. (laughs) It's really in disrepair. Oh, boy. (sighs) Uh, we got to get you a recliner and some new underwear while we're at it. We got to get out of here. So we yeah. Gotta do. Yep. Randy's got shit to Randy's do. Randy's got shit to do. We got to go. And we were fucking late. Sorry, Randy. Oh, good. I love you. oh he said he loves us. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't say it into the mic. Oh, wow. Okay. He doesn't want people to know that he loves us. That's really great. And that's what this country is founded on. Okay. Sometimes you love somebody and you just can't say it out loud. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for uh, joining us today. Uh, thanks for joining us, slop, slop citizens. We love you guys. And, um, yeah. And. Cut. We love you. Cut. <laughs> I'm going to send you those farts. That's such a tight fart. <laughs> <laughs>
Where? Randy got a tight butthole, baby.